business to wear a team only pin without having skinned their knees, gotten beat up and bruised and challenged and all of those things. They don't get there without having the same self-doubts that you may be experiencing at some point in time in your business, without some of the ups and downs, some of the challenges. So I want to share with you a little bit of that background so, so that you get some, some of the maybe the bigger picture. I was born, I, I followed my brother into life, right? He got to experience a little bit of Ed over the last day or so. And Ed's a unique individual. He was, he was born with a handicap. He was born, I think it was probably on his chart, that he was born without a comfort zone. <laughs> and so throughout life, he never ever experienced the feeling like, I can't do that. Instead, he always said, well, I can do that. Why can't I do that? So I come along a couple of years later, and uh, I get involved in sports because he led the way. I get involved in this and that and the other in high school because he had led the way. And, and in some cases, you know, if a teacher said, we were never in high school together. He was four years ahead of me in school, five years. And so the teacher would say, Deritter, are you, are you Ed Deritter's brother? And by the way they asked it, I would say yes or no. <laughs> Right? You're not Ed Ritter's brother, are you? No, Ed never. So off he goes to Rutgers University. By the way, just a couple of things about Ed. Ed graduated Rutgers at age, he just turned 20. And then he became the long, youngest international loan officer in the history of Bank of America working wow. on Wall Street at age 20. Now, before you think he was really smart and mature, I think that most teachers pushed him ahead to get rid of the seat. <laughs> but that is true. So I follow that, and you know, I get involved in athletics and I get a scholarship. But you know, I'm growing up. I'm, our dad owned a gas station. We had you know very very humble beginnings, and up until age 17, that was my summer job, and any time off that I could have, that's where I made my money, my extra money. I worked in a gas station, and we had the. Uh, uh, the first gas station was an Exxon station coming off the George Washington Bridge on Route 4 in Fort Lee, New Jersey. How many can picture where that is? So you get it. And so we had this Exxon station, and I would drive out there. I lived 14 miles from there, and I pumped gas. And fortunately, I also could shoot baskets pretty well, and so I got a scholarship, and I played basketball at Manhattan College in New York City. Our home court those days was Madison Square Garden. I played over 20 games in Madison Square Garden. Wow. I was not a star in college. I was a star in high school. I got recruited by a lot of places, and I was an okay player in college. I contributed. I was a good teammate and a good team player. But I, there were stars on the team. I wasn't one of those. So my senior year, I blow out my knee, ACL injury. It was long before they had a really simple procedure that would leave this big a scar. Instead, I have a scar that wraps around. And if you were here last month, you saw me walking with a cane because years later, I still have a little bit of an issue here and there, and, uh, and yet some physical therapy is coming along, and I think I'm really getting confident that, that uh, Paris will be a good walking experience. That comes up next month. So I get the scholarship, I play, I'm done, I move on, and I get the most unique opportunity at age 22, I get hired to be the head basketball coach at a small college in northern New Jersey. Wow. And I get to the opportunity to teach. I'm in the classroom teaching English, and, and coaching basketball. And I get a recruiting budget. And they say, you know, just bring in, bring in what you need to to field a decent team. They didn't, they didn't say anything about winning. The school had never won half their games, and they'd only had a program for four years. So I come in, and the first year, we win five, we lose 19. Now, that might sound like we got beat a lot. <laughs> you have no idea how badly we got beat. I mean, you're going to lose it by 40 points some nights. And you think, okay, well, if you were that bad, you were really five teams worse. No, there were three teams worse. We played two of them twice. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, it was not pretty. So the season ends. I have surgery on my, my first surgery on my knee. And I get to recruiting because I'm on crutches. And all I've got is a phone, and, and I get to talk to people. So I'm calling coaches. Well, you know, here's what I'm looking for. Somebody who's maybe a late bloomer coming out of high school, hasn't committed to some place. Maybe they're playing out of position because they're 6'2", but they were playing center in high school. Or maybe they didn't have the grades to go right in and play somewhere. That's what I'm looking for. And I asked that question enough times that I recruited some very good players. Now, why do I tell you that? It's not a basketball story, is it? It's your story. You're looking to field a team. 
had I only been a football player, we would have had a bigger team faster, right? But basketball was only five, right? It, in terms of the new skin experience, right? Taking that parallel right across. So you have to ask yourself, if you want to field a team that doesn't get beat by 40 every night and only win five out of 24 games, you need to get some great players on your team. It's amazing how much better I appear to be as a coach when I have a lot of much better players. Our first team picture, oh my gosh. I mean, it, it, would, it would be in the Hall of Fame, but for other reasons, right? But the third team picture, suddenly I wasn't the tallest guy in the picture, and suddenly I had recruited very good players. So that's for your notes. Recruit really good players. Now along the way, it's a blank ironism, but recruit good people first. It's about quality and the value system of the people. If you stay in that area, recruiting good people, it's amazing what your team will end up looking like. Some of the best basketball players I have ever coached were not the stars of your team. They were just good people that made the team better. You'll have those as you're growing 